Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a photo book in Photoshop Elements. Let's go ahead and get started. Over on the right hand side you can see this create button. When we click on the down arrow we can go to photo book and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. Now on the left hand side you have print locally. If you print these locally this is the option that you want. You can print it out as a JPEG, you can save it out as an Adobe PDF, and of course you could take that to a department store and also get those printed. Now if you want to send this directly to Shutterfly, you have three options here, an 8 square, a 12 square, and an 11 by 8 right here. The next thing you need to do is go over to themes, and as you can see here, there are a number of themes right here. After we pick the theme, we can still customize the theme by giving it different backgrounds. But I'm going to pick one of the ones that does not have this blue triangle. All that means is that the assets or the backgrounds and frames for that particular theme has not been downloaded. So as you can see, I already have my celebration downloaded, so I'm going to click on that theme. On the right hand side preview box you'll be able to see what that theme looks like. Now on the bottom you have autofill with selected images. This is great if you're going to create a photo book. You can open up all the images that you want inside that book and then select autofill and it will create the book for you. Now there's a minimum when you send it to Shutterfly, a minimum of 20 pages and that goes up to 78 and then your price is going to be based upon how many pages you have. Once we're happy with that particular theme, then I'm going to select the OK and then it's going to create my project for me. As you can see on the right hand side, I have 20 pages along with a title page. I can select those pages by clicking the right hand arrow and going by one by one through the pages or I can go to the right hand side and select and jump straight to the page that I want to edit. Now on the bottom you'll notice these are the pages. I also have a layout button. If I click that layout button I can go in and change the number of photos that are on each page. So if I don't like that there are three photos in here and I want four photos I can double click these four photos and it will change the layout of my pages. Over here we also have a graphics button. I can click on that graphics button and I can add clip art there are two different types of frames that come with this particular theme and if I click on this frame right here and then come over here and double click on that frame it will change that frame to the different sort of frame that you want. Now I have backgrounds here if I click the down arrow you can change each background individually so let's say I wanted to just change these two pages I could come over here and double click on that yellow one and it will change the background of those two pages. Now over here on the left hand side you'll notice that there are only four tools. One is the zoom tool, one is the hand tool, one is the move tool where we can move different objects inside our page and then the type text tool where we can move and change the type. Now on the bottom here you'll notice that there are still our photo bin our tool options, undo, redo, and our organizer. But I want to show you how to use the advanced mode. The advanced mode is a button right here on the left hand side. If I click on that, you'll notice that all the tools from Photoshop reappear. And that's what I want to use. The next thing that I want you to notice is on the bottom right hand side, now we have the layers palette. So we can add new layers to this particular page and then add anything that we want. So let's go ahead and go to the title page right there. I'm going to show you how to add a photo. You can just click inside that particular frame. I'm going to add one of my photos and I want to thank Dot Jocelyn over at Flickr using the Creative Commons license for allowing me to use this picture. So I'm going to ch change that. Now once the picture is added inside that frame you have a little slider bar right here. If I move that slider bar over to the right hand side you can see that the image is increased in size inside that frame. You'll notice that it doesn't fit the whole frame. If I want it to fit the whole frame I could go to the corner and I could drag that corner out and then drag the bottom corner out and as you can see it's filling that frame. When I'm happy with the size I can tick the green checkbox right there. Now if I 
I wanted to actually change the frame size. Maybe I didn't like the way that these leaves are going over the text. I could actually click on this frame right here, hit a Command T, and then I can change the size by dragging that corner down and dragging this corner up right here. Now, of course, if I go out, you can also see that you can rotate this if you want to rotate it a little bit. And when I'm happy, I can either hit the return key or tick the green checkbox right there. Now, if I wanted to change my text, I could click over here on the horizontal type text tool and I could highlight this area and add some different text. When I'm happy with that text, I could go ahead and tick the green checkbox. Or if I wanted to change that text, I could go ahead and change it using the tool options right here. I could change the color, the size, and the actual font. But I'm going to check the green checkbox right now. Now if I wanted to jump over here, I could add some different photos to this, these particular pages right here. I could click inside there. I want to go ahead and I want to thank Chris Willis over at Flickr once again for letting me use this photo using the Creative Commons license. So I'm going to add that photo right there. And then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller in size and then drag that photo over right there. When I'm happy, I'll tick the green checkbox and then I'm going to move the frame to the middle right there. Now, if I wanted to go and I wanted to add a different background, I could come over here and I could click on graphics right there. Now that I have the advanced tools checked, you can see that there are many more backgrounds that I can use for this particular photo book. Now I'm going to choose one of the ones right over here. I'm just going to choose a map. If I double click that, it's going to change my background into that map. And then if I wanted to change this frame, I could click on the frame right there, click the up arrow to get my frames, and I could actually change this frame to maybe one of these animal prints. So I could go ahead and do that, double click that, and it will change that frame into an animal print. Now, of course, if I wanted to resize the whole thing, I could hit Command or Control T right there. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to change the size of my frame. Go ahead and move that and hit enter. If I want to put that in the middle somewhere, I can do that. Now one of the great things about Photoshop Elements and this photo book is now I can go in there and add things on layers. So if I wanted to come over here and delete all these photos and add something just a bit different, I could come over to the layers tab right there and I could actually turn these frames off by coming over here and turning these frames off and now I have a blank canvas to start with if I wanted to add something new to that I could just come over file place and I want to add another photo again this one is of Downtown Pictures. I want to thank Downtown Pictures over at Flickr for letting me use this photo. I'm going to double click this and place it inside my photo here. I'll go ahead and resize this. And I think I'll spin it just a tiny bit and then hit enter. And then I'm going to move this to the center. Now one of the other great reasons why we want to do this is because I could come over and if you've seen my other tutorials I could come over to the brush tool right over here and then I could pick a different brush. Now I have a bunch of them downloaded some of them from DeviantArt some from other brush places and I'll put the link to those brush locations over here on the right hand side, once you click brush, you can click the down arrow here and you can load your brushes. My brushes are located in my downloads folder, so I'll go down to the bottom where I have my tape brushes. I'll double click that and then I will select some scotch tape right there as my brush. Now I have the black color selected. I'm going to go now to my layers palette and click the dog ear icon to add another layer on top of this and now I'm going to add some tape to this particular 
picture and there we have it I've actually taped that picture on there now I'm going to add another layer right here and I will tape this now why did I do that well it's because I want to spin that around a little bit if I hit command T now I can go over here because it's on a separate layer and I can change the location of the tape and there we have it now if I want to do it again I could add another layer over here add some tape right in here and last but not least add a fourth layer put my tape over here and then hit command T and I can rotate that tape around there and hit enter I'm going to go back to my pages right over here and I'm going to select pages 3 and 4 now I'm going to change the background and if you can remember you go over to graphics and then I will click the up arrow right here to get rid of the frames and I'll click the down arrow to get rid to get my backgrounds this time I'm going to select the autumn leaves right here so I'll double click on the autumn leaves what's going to happen now because it has that blue triangle up there it's going to download that from the internet and then it's going to add the picture on there now I don't really like these frames either so I am going to go to my layers palette right there and I'm going to turn off all these frames and as you can see I have my background selected right there I can also unlock my background if I don't really like the vibrancy of that I can double click my background and I can turn that into a layer and I can change the opacity of this just a tiny bit right there now if we really want to see what this looks like I can add another layer below that by hitting the command key and then hitting the dog ear icon now once I have another transparent layer below that I could go to edit and I could fill this layer with white and select OK. So now we have a little bit lighter background here. I'm going to add another picture over here by adding a new layer. Going to my dog ear icon, I'll add a new layer up at the top. I'll go to File and Place. And inside my SkyDrive where I keep all my photos, I'm just going to use one of the same pictures again, one by Chris Willis. Now that I have that photo here, going to hit enter after I increase it in size just a little bit then I'm going to go and select my brush tool again click the down arrow and then click this little right hand piece where I can load my brushes underneath my downloads I have one that's called office brushes so I'm going to select that one and of course I am going to include these in my description and as you can tell there's all these great picture holders that I have right here so I am going to select the bottom left picture holder right there I'm going to put it up next to this photo and then use my bracket tools to make it just a little bit bigger I'm going to add a new layer to this by clicking on the dog ear icon and then I am going to select I'm going to tap this a few times to make it dark and there we have it I have a nice corner I'm going to select the next brush and that is the bottom right I'm going to increase that in size as well until I get the size that I like then I'm going to tap it a few times again until I have a corner I'll repeat this two more times with the top ones increase that one in size and then tap a few times on there and now I have a corner and last but not least we have the top right hand corner right there increase this one in size and then tap a few times and we have the photo corners right there so what I've done for you is I've showed you how to use the advanced tools using your Photoshop elements editor and being able to make a photo book. You can also do this in basic mode but you don't have the option of going to layers and you don't have the option of being able to add new 
brushes and the backgrounds that they give you are very limited. So click on that advanced mode, you get all these new tools right there. You have the ability to add all these different types of backgrounds on here. You have all sorts of clip art, you have different types of brushes that you can use. It's a really great way to be able to make your photo book. From the very beginning, I selected the Shutterfly book. So at the bottom, if we just selected the print, it will only give you the option to save and close. If you use the Shutterfly one, it gives you the ability to order. So when you click on this order button right here, it is going to create your book for you. After you've clicked the order button, you get this particular Shutterfly photo book order. If you already have one, you can go in and you can sign in right there by clicking on that. If you don't, you can sign up for a Shutterfly account. They'll give you 50 free prints and you can order your book directly through Photoshop Elements. The next thing that it does is it saves your photo book out in your organizer so you can always go back to your photo book and edit it later on. Now I'm going to close out this organizer right now. The next thing you can do over here is you can save it out. When you click save, I can go to my desktop. I can save this out as a photo project. Now why would I want to do that? That's because it leaves everything intact. It puts all the pages back, it puts all your photos back there, and keeps it as a single book. You can also save it out as an Adobe Acrobat PDF file, which you can email to somebody if it's small enough, or you can give it to them as a gift and then burn that onto a CD or DVD and mail that to them. I'm going to select save right here on top of my desktop. Now that it's finished, I'm going to go to my finder or you can go to your Windows Explorer on my desktop. I'm going to open this. I'm going to open it with Adobe Acrobat. And as you can see, there is my photo book. There are different options just on the Acrobat interface. You can go to the page navigation and page display and you can change this to however you want to look at it. There is your photo book. Now one of the things that people ask me is, is that you mentioned that you can save this out as a JPEG but I don't see that option. Well your option isn't quite where you think it would be. When you go to file you can go to save for web. Now of course you're going to get this nasty warning right here saying that it's woo, it's way way too big for the web and we know that but we're gonna select yes anyway and it gives us the ability to go in here and save all of our pages out as JPEGs and then we could even bump this up to 100 percent quality if we wanted to because we really don't care. The original file is 32 megabytes for this particular page. I know that's a very large file. You can always save it down a little bit lower quality, but if we're going to print this out to some nice photo paper or we're going to send this out, we might want to have it a little bit higher in quality. So now that I've showed you how to create your photo book, you need to go out and you need to select some great photos and send your book out and get it bound into a photo book. Hopefully you like this tutorial. It's something a little bit different from what I normally do. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like and pass my video on to your friends. Cheers.